good evening uh, thank you very much so uh, this is a 42 year old man with a right hip problem since childhood he also had a gunshot injury to the left hip around 10 years back and that had nothing to do with the right hip pathology so he had right hip pain shortening and difficulty with activities of daily living which was progressively increasing he had a 20 degrees of fixed flexion deformity with a true shortening of 5.5 centimeters and ESR and set rates were normal. And these are his uh, AP and uh, lateral x-rays. Okay, who wants to, uh, Dr. Tapasvi, you've been quiet. So I think what we're dealing here is a dysplastic hip. This is probably a crow type three. And uh, though there is some form of articulation which is happening there, we need to look at a couple of deformities. So first, of course, we'll assess the spinopelvic relationship, that's one. Second, we want to see and judge the amount of pelvic rotation and pelvic tilt. We definitely want a CT scan of the whole pelvis because we want to assess the, not just the astabulum for the you know, boundaries and the limits of the astabulum, but we also want to assess the relationship of the pelvis, especially the rotation. Also, one needs to... Let me, let me interrupt you for one second. So. Uh, show of hands in the panel. Who's getting a CT scan pre-op? Two. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't get one either. Did you get one? No. Uh, okay. But keep, keep going. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. The other problem is that uh, there's also going to be a deformity in the femur that one needs to understand because a lot of these uh, febrile necks will have an abnormal version. The trochanter may not be exactly, you know, uh, placed exactly in the correct location because of constant remodeling that's happening over a period of time. And in these uh, type of patients who have an excessively thin canal, you need to be prepared with something like an SROM kind of system where you can dial in your version as well. Also one needs to be pretty much aware that you may need to resort to a subtrochanteric shortening if the need be, which is another backup plan that you have to have in mind. I agree with all those points. Excellent uh, summary. So tell us uh, what you did. So uh, the uh, diagnosis was looking like a crow 3 dysplasia, but because of the bullets there, we were not sure. And uh, flexion deformity is not a very common finding in a dysplastic hip, which tends to be more mobile. So we thought, could it be a post-septic sequelae as well? I, I think uh, you asked the right question, because that is not a very typical looking dysplastic hip. Right, yes. Plus, it's a male. So for both of those reasons, I, if, if you would have asked me to just bet what it was originally, I would have bet it was a childhood septic hip. Yeah. I might be wrong, but that would have been my bet. And uh, bo both have a, a very different uh, approach because it's a septic hip, then it is more tighter and it's a very high probability that you would need a shortening. If it's a dysplastic, then the nerve tension would dictate whether you would need to do a shortening or not. One comment more. So, uh, yeah. Oh, no, but the, the CT scan, I want to say, though, I, I was going to get it because for pre-op planning, there was a lot of rotation on that pelvis, but there could have been a lot of, you know, um, hemi-pelvis retroversion, and it's really hard to know. And a CT, you'd be able to derotate the pelvis and understand how much of that was rotational versus retroversion, because your cup positioning for this is actually quite challenging. And, I mean, I don't use a lot of robotics for total hip, but this one, a cup, I mean, if you were thinking about a CT and robotic planning, you could put that cup in a perfect position and ignore this very abnormal retroverted pelvis anatomy as well. And the, even just seeing the 3D recon of the cup is very helpful interoperatively. So I think it has multiple beneficial, um, uh, it helps you a lot. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not opposed that you would get a CT scan. I'm not opposed that you'd use the robot. Um, you know, I, I think you just have to recognize and figure out what your anatomy is. So what, what special techniques did you use? So we anticipated the need for a smaller size socket and femur. Uh, we thought that the hip was articulating in a false astabulum, but there was good medial astabular bone stock. The pre-op need for smaller bantam sockets and stem with versional and craniocaudal freedom was anticipated and we kept a SROM uh, as a standby. And uh, there were two options, whether to do a, a slightly elevated hip center and then do a, a complete soft tissue release. So we did a posterior approach, uh, release the G-Max, the anterior capsule and the psoas and uh, prog essentially skeletonize the proximal femur except the abductors. Uh, prepared the acetabulum in a slightly elevated hip center and uh, did an SROM and we didn't need to do uh, subtrochanteric shortening in this patient. Just a uh, uh, thing that we have identified three different types of uh, shortenings depending upon the uh, distance between the tip of the trochanter to the ilium. So if it could be a supratrochanteric shortening a subtrochanteric shortening or a combined shortening in these high-riding hips, 
with varying neck shaft angles, which we must be aware of when we are doing. So this was a standard variety where the neck shaft angle was around 130 degrees, and uh, this is the post-operative X-ray. Okay. And this is the follow-up X-ray. So, any critiques? I personally would have put some screws in the cup, but um, it looks like you got away with it. It looks okay. So. So who's putting a, who's putting the cup in a little bit higher? Who's putting the cup in anatomically? Any, everyone like the position of the cup? DJ, what do you think? Uh, yeah. So just because the cup is higher that you have got away without a subtrochanic shortening osteotomy. So in many of the CLO3, CLO2, uh, it's really helpful, makes the surgery so simple. If you just go a high hip center and now well-published results. So uh, a mild to moderate high hip center is the way to go. Yeah, I would accept slightly higher hip centers. And but it makes life easier, much easier. Yeah, we, I mean, we published on it and you know, we basically changed our, our our protocols. So now for crow twos and threes, we always go modified high hip center, and crow fours are the only ones we bring down uh, all the way. Dr. Mohanty, you had a question? I have a simple question that before surgery, how many of the panelists would do a traction x ray to assess that how much it is coming down? A good question. <laughs> traction x ray. Peter, you, have, you heard of that? I haven't done it, no. No? Uh, Anybody else? I can't see how the management will change. Uh, you may get some information, but I can't see how the management will, so we don't do it, yeah. yeah you can get an idea that how, whether you are going to you know, reduce the hip or doing a subtrochanic osteotomy, you have a plan in mind that uh, no, but, it but, looks like crow three, but it may come down to crow two. Sh sure, yeah. but the, you're going to prepare with a, you know, the instrumentation for a subtrochanic shortening osteotomy, isn't it? So that's the point, you know. Like for example, in this case, you say you need a CD to find the, the dimensions of the socket. You need to have your smallest sockets available anyway. Yeah. So it doesn't really practically change anything. That's the point I'm trying to make. So what's going on, Mahanti? You're going down to x-ray and pulling on the patient's leg? Sorry? <laughs> Are you going into x-ray and pulling on the patient's leg? Yeah, me or my fellow will okay. give it traction and just see. <laughs> All right. So let's plan the hip, something planned and plan to be ready. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. uh, so uh, the summary is that all high riding hips are not the same. We must evaluate them carefully to look at uh, the pattern of shortening and the neck shaft angle. And it must look at the presence of a false acetabulum, in which case you will not need to do so much of a shortening osteotomy and the extent of proximal migration. Up to uh, one and a half centimeters of elevated hip center has been published to be acceptable and can uh, simplify a more complex op operation. Smaller cups and stems with smaller sizes with versional and craniocaudal adjustability must be used. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much.